Hello everyone. Welcome to Fluent Lingua. If you are planning to take the IELTS test, this video might help you. I am Dharmendra Sheth. I have been teaching English for more than 2 decades. I have helped hundreds of students to prepare for their IELTS examinations. You may know already that if you want to study or work or settle abroad you need to appear for one of the two IELTS exams the two modules are the the academic module and the general training module now it is important that you become familiar with the format of the examination and also the types of questions however it may not be enough some students they appear for lots of mock tests they download material from the net they appear for the tests there are lots of books available containing hundreds of tests but doing tests is not enough what is important is to remember that the IELTS test is actually a test of the english language so it is important to improve the overall command of the english language now when i say the overall command of the english language what do i mean some students they say there are no grammar questions why should we study grammar well grammar is a tool to convey your ideas if your grammar is poor you will not be able to express your views clearly and succinctly and when i say grammar it is not just sentence grammar when you talk about tenses and voice and direct indirect speech you are talking about sentence grammar but apart from that there is a huge chunk of grammar we call it we call word grammar sometimes individual words they have their own grammar and sometimes some phrases they have their own grammar for example if you take a word like enjoy then after that word you require the ing form of the verb if there is a verb so i say i like to play cricket i love to play cricket but i enjoy to play is not possible i must say i enjoy playing cricket similarly if i take a phrase look forward to now whenever you use look forward to in any any tense it may be the simple present tense or the present continuous tense but after look forward to whatever verb that you use it has to be in the ing form so i look forward to meeting you so this is related to word grammar for example the word prefer i prefer tea to coffee now though there is comparison we don't use then so grammar sentence grammar and word grammar they both are equally important some people ask me should we work on pronunciation well of course you should what is important is intelligibility whatever you speak should be easily comprehensible people should be able to hear and understand what you are saying You don't need to speak like a British or American person but at least your speech should be internationally intelligible. For that you need to work on four areas. And why? Because most people have what we call MTI mother tongue influence. So when they speak English their first language will influence their style of speaking. so to remove or to decrease the influence of this mti we need to work on four areas the first is sounds you need to improve your sounds you need to compare your mother tongue sounds with the english sounds and then try to make some subtle adjustments in the way you speak or utter words second is word stress every word in english 
as a fixed place, a fixed syllable which is stressed. So when I say important, the syllable po is stressed. Important. When you say interesting, the first syllable is stressed. When you say specific, second syllable is stressed. When you say information, the third syllable is stressed. So in English, every word has a fixed place which is stressed. A fixed syllable which is stressed. The knowledge of that word stress will increase your intelligibility. The third is the rhythm. English is a rhythmic language. Not the whole language, but there are some chunks. I want to buy a pen. He practiced every day. So you can see the, the stresses come at regular intervals of time. That's what we call the rhythm of English. Then the fourth is intonation. The rise and fall in the pitch of your voice. When I say Monday, you understand that it is a question because I am using a rising tone. And when I say Monday, it's an answer, a falling tone. So if you want to improve your pronunciation and even clarity, overall clarity in your speech, then you can work on sounds, word stress, rhythm and intonation. Another important area is vocabulary. Learning words in isolation is okay. It can help to some extent. But you should know words, how to use words in different contexts. One of the areas which most learners find difficult is collocations. Collocation is the company that words keep. Some words in English, they go with some fixed set of words. That's what is called collocation. For example, if somebody says, yesterday I did a mistake, then you can immediately find out that it is not acceptable in English. Because the words do and mistake, they do not go together. That person should say, I made a mistake yesterday. Because make and mistake, they collocate with each other. Similarly, we say make progress, not do progress. And we do homework, we don't make homework. So, word partnership, collocations, very important. The next is idiomatic expressions. Idioms are usually difficult to understand. Because very often, the sum total of meanings of individual words is different from the meaning of the overall idiom. When you say, I was on cloud nine, that means I was very happy. It has nothing to do with clouds or it has nothing to do with the number nine. Fixed phrases. In English, there are so many fixed phrases and they are very widely used even in formal writing. On the one hand, you have something. On the other hand, you have something else. Now, it is a fixed phrase. In spite of, it's a fixed phrase. So, there are hundreds and thousands of fixed phrases that can improve your fluency in speech as well as in writing. Listening. As you know, in IELTS test, you have a listening component. Now, it is important to develop your ability to listen to and understand various English accents. And to prepare yourself, you can listen to three uh, major varieties of English used as models in many universities in the world. The first is the RP, Received Pronunciation the standard British variety of English. The kind of English people generally say BBC English or King's English or Queen's English. That's the kind of English spoken in the southern part of England where we have Oxford and Cambridge universities. The other variety is GA, General American English. 
and the third is the australian variety of english plus there are some other standard varieties of english so listening to different varieties plays an important role in your overall performance on the test people ask me what is the most difficult component listening speaking reading or writing obviously my answer is writing writing is the most difficult skill what is important in writing is coherence because when you work on your grammar your vocabulary your pronunciation you have read a lot then you acquire a reasonably good command of english so you are able to string words together you are able to make sentences but what is important is accuracy brevity and clarity and to acquire these three qualities you need to learn coherence how to create a whole picture which is neat which is easily comprehensible whether it is an essay or any kind of writing to achieve this coherence you need some devices and luckily in english we have many linguistic devices using which we can create coherence we can generate connections apart from linguistic devices we also have some semantic devices 